Kate Wilson was walking slowly down the street, oblivious to all the people walking nearby. The young woman felt so bad that her grief prevented her from finding even a single reason to come to terms with what had happened and find the strength to move on. Kate's mental turmoil was caused by the fact that her mother had died two weeks ago. She had struggled with a serious illness for several months. But it wasn't only the pain of losing her mother that bothered the pretty young woman with blue eyes and long brown hair. The thing was that Kate had recently received a strange letter from a lawyer. The letter had elaborate instructions and a key to a safety deposit box in which her mother supposedly kept all of her savings, which were detailed in her will. Kate's amazement knew no bounds. Savings? What savings? We barely had enough money to get food. We went weeks eating only stale cakes made from cornmeal. And now it turns out there was a safety deposit box? The young woman kept wandering on her way to the bank. Penelope Wilson raised her daughter on her own, and being a caring and loving mother, always tried to provide her with everything she needed. Kate knew nothing about her father, so she'd long decided to think of him as a pilot or a military man who died in some unfortunate accident. Penelope Wilson didn't like to talk about it and always gave rather evasive answers to her daughter's questions. Penelope had always lived modestly and didn't really socialize with anyone except for the necessary contact with her co-workers. For the last 10 years of her life, she worked as a cleaning lady at a roadside motel, which was mostly frequented by bikers and truckers. There was never a lot of money in the family, and Penelope and her daughter always had to save every cent. And now it turned out that Penelope had a safety deposit box at the bank, which was considered one of the best and most reliable in the city. Kate understood that it had to be something very important or valuable for her mother to turn to such a highly protected facility for its safekeeping. The situation seemed rather absurd to the young woman. All this time, she lived in poverty and couldn't even afford to buy an old trailer home in order not to pay rent. Kate always trusted her mother and was sure that they had no secrets from each other. But when she received such a strange letter, the young woman realized that in fact, she didn't know anything about her mother's past. Penelope Wilson had always been a secretive woman who shunned new acquaintances and never brought guests into her home. Only now did Kate begin to understand the true reasons for the precautions her mother had been taking all of her life. Immersed in her anxious thoughts, Kate didn't even realize when she got to the bank located on the corner of Main Street. At the entrance, the young woman came face to face with the security guard who politely inquired about the purpose of her visit. Good afternoon, I'd like to get my safety deposit box. Kate answered readily. Simon was new to this job and therefore, he hadn't yet become as hardened as most of the other security guards at such financial institutions. Simon used to serve in the Marine Corps until recently, but he was discharged after getting injured on one of the missions. At first, it was very hard for the man to return to civilian life. Fortunately, luck smiled upon him when he met the bank's owner, who always made it a point to hire men with army backgrounds to his security guards. Like any responsible employee, Simon was well aware of all of the rules and protocols that were in place at the financial institution. Having listened to Kate's request, the young guard immediately took her to the bank manager, who was surprised to see such a strange visitor. Donovan Green had been working at this bank for five years, but it was the first time he had seen such an unusual client. He knew that people who rented safety deposit boxes usually had something valuable to keep there which meant that they were well off and was always reflected in their clothes or demeanor. But the young woman looked more like a beggar than the owner of anything of real value. Nevertheless, Donovan always considered himself a true professional, and therefore he had no problem putting on a mask of respect and cordiality. Prepared to listen to the woman's request, the manager looked intently into her eyes. Hello, I would need to get to the safety deposit box, number 245. My mother rented it out several years ago, Kate said quietly. Good afternoon, miss. Getting to your safety deposit box is easy, but do you have a key to open it? Donovan asked, having a hard time not letting his contempt show in his voice. Yes, sir, I have the key and even a letter from the lawyer citing my mother's will. Kate rushed to respond. The bank manager frowned. Donovan didn't like the fact that this specific safety deposit box was rented out many years ago before he started working at the bank. That was the reason why the manager didn't know the name of the person who opened it. Donovan sat down at his computer and quickly found the information about the safety deposit box number 245. 
Is Penelope Wilson your mother? Donovan asked. Yes, sir, that's my mother. She couldn't come in person because, unfortunately, she died two weeks ago. Kate answered, having a hard time keeping her emotions in check. Donovan nodded and clasped his fingers. Frankly speaking, the manager didn't really like this whole safety deposit box situation. He was used to always being in control and made it a point to know what was going on. He had all the other employees under his control, having gathered compromising information on all of them and gotten other means of influence. Few people knew that Donovan was passionate about slot machines, which he could play around the clock. Naturally, none of his subordinates knew that Donovan Green spent all of his weekends in Nevada, where he indulged in gambling and lost huge amounts of money. Since the man was losing money quicker than he was earning it, he came up with a scam that helped him stay afloat. Donovan often scammed the customers by inflating their interest rates, so he could keep the difference between the real interest rate and what the customers were paying. The owner of the bank knew nothing about it and truly believed that Donovan was a responsible employee he could trust. The bank manager also understood that the safety deposit box number 245 had something very valuable stored in it since it was insured for a rather large amount. Well, let's go to the vault, miss. You can open your safety deposit box there, the manager replied. Kate's face showed that the manager's proposal had taken her by surprise. The young woman thought that the manager was supposed to bring her the contents of the safety deposit box and that she'd only have to sign some paperwork to that effect. But instead, the manager led Kate into the vault, where he pointed to the right safety deposit box. According to the instructions, Donovan was to leave the room and return only after the client had collected their deposit. But the devious manager understood that the young woman was probably unaware of the proper procedure and decided to stay in the room so that he could see what was stored in the safety deposit box number 245. Kate carefully inserted the key and turned it twice after which she heard a characteristic clicking sound. Her heart was pounding with excitement when the young woman pulled out the metal box, involuntarily noting that it was rather heavy. But when Kate opened the box, she couldn't help but yelp in surprise. Dear God, where did all this come from? The young woman exclaimed. At that moment, Donovan looked more like a heron or a giraffe, desperately trying to stretch his neck to take a peek over the client's back. Having finally seen what was inside the box, the manager turned pale. It was filled to the brim with all kinds of jewelry, gold brooches, rings, and bracelets. At that moment, Kate felt like she'd gotten into Aladdin's cave, where the innumerable treasures of Arab sheikhs were stored. Looks like you got quite an inheritance from your mother, Donovan commented, failing to hide how jealous he was feeling. Kate felt very uncomfortable and blushed to the very roots of her hair. Frankly speaking, she didn't expect to see such a treasure. After the woman put the jewelry into a paper bag, kindly provided by Donovan, she saw a note at the bottom of the box. Of course, she didn't read it right away, but decided to do it at home instead. At that very moment, the bank manager was frantically trying to come up with another scam. Of course, there was no way he was going to let Kate leave just like that. The best idea he could come up with was to get to the woman's home address so he could pass it along to other members of the gang he'd been a part of for several years. Donovan had to play a little trick on Kate in order to get the information that he needed. Wait a second, miss. I feel like you shouldn't be walking on the street alone with such a valuable load in your bag. If you get robbed, I won't be able to help you. So I'd like to ask one of my guards to escort you home. You met him at the door. He'll take you home and help you get your valuables there safe and sound. Donovan offered with a sly smile on his face. Kate was so shocked by the amount of jewels that she got that she gladly accepted the manager's offer. The young woman left the vault and the manager called Simon into his office and gave him very specific instructions. Listen to me carefully. First, you walk her home and remember the exact address as well as the layout of her house. Also, find out a way to ask if she has a dog and an alarm system, Donovan asked. Simon found the manager's request very strange. Sure, the young guard didn't mind taking a pretty woman home, but all the other requests seemed rather suspicious. Sir, why do you need to know the layout of her home? Simon asked cautiously. That's none of your business. This isn't the Marine Corps. I'm the one giving the orders here. You do what I say and keep your mouth shut. Donovan snapped. At that moment, Simon realized that the manager was up to no good. 
During his time in the Marine Corps, the man got to see a lot of bad things and had long ago learned to sense when something was off. Of course, Simon didn't talk about it with his client, but he did walk her home as she was promised. However, instead of studying the layout of the rooms in the house, Simon froze at the door and lowered his eyes before whispering, Be careful today, miss. Better yet, hide the jewelry in some other place. I can't tell you anymore, but I have a feeling that you might get robbed today. Robbed? But no one even knows that I got the inheritance. Who would rob me? Kate asked in disbelief. Simon couldn't answer her questions because he didn't really know anything for sure. Unlike most security guards, he treated his job with utmost responsibility and always watched what was going on outside the bank. Being very attentive, Simon repeatedly noticed the bank manager in the company of some strange people who looked like members of some sort of a gang. The guard didn't tell Kate about it since the young woman was already freaking out over his warning. Having said goodbye to the young woman, Simon returned to the bank. However, when the man tried to lie to the manager that he didn't get the chance to go inside the house, Donovan started screaming at him. Why am I even paying you? You're not doing your job properly, and you're refusing to obey direct orders. Excuse me, sir, but what you asked of me has nothing to do with bank security. Simon objected. Tired of fighting, Donovan simply waves his hand for the guard to leave his office. The truth was that he'd already made up his mind about the young woman. That night, he was going to send people to her house to rob her and get the jewelry. And here's what was happening in another part of the city in the meantime. Sorting through the jewelry, Kate remembered the note laying at the bottom of the paper bag. Imagine the woman's surprise when she unfolded the sheet of paper and saw just a couple of sentences written by her late mother. The paper was yellowed from time to time and had an address written on it, which was where Kate was supposed to take her inheritance as soon as she got it. That's another town. Why would mom want me to go there? Kate whispered in surprise. Trying to unravel this mystery, the woman didn't even notice when it got dark outside. As one would expect, she forgot all about the guard's warnings. The naive young woman simply couldn't believe that someone would dare to rob her on the same day she went to the bank. Therefore, Kate didn't pay any attention to the inconspicuous car that was stopped in front of her house. A minute later, three strong men came out of the old, dusty Ford. Having taken a furtive look around, they headed for Kate's house. They put on masks with slits for the eyes on their way over and took out batons and knives. It's hard to say how this story would have ended if it weren't for Simon who appeared at the scene. The man came over as soon as he got off of work and hid in the nearest bushes watching Kate's house. The former Marine wasn't afraid of the masks or the weapons. Simon started fighting the robbers, putting all of his past training to good use. The robbers didn't expect to get into a fight with the military man. Robbing a defenseless young woman was one thing, but fighting someone so strong and capable was very different. Simon's screams attracted the attention of the neighbors, who all got outside to see what all the commotion was about. Seeing that they were getting outnumbered, the robbers fled the scene. Unfortunately, despite his training and skills, Simon got quite beat up, which was why one of the neighbors immediately called an ambulance and the police. It was only then that Kate realized what the guard was warning her about. She hugged Simon with tears in her eyes and apologized to him. Stop it, this is none of your fault. I'm just glad that everything worked out fine, the young man said, losing strength from the blood laws. Fortunately, Simon was still conscious when the police arrived and managed to testify, which helped the officers get on the trail of the robbers. Thus, the very next day, Donovan Green was detained and charged with organizing a criminal gang. Simon got medical help and quickly came to his senses, feeling much better. Kate Wilson also didn't waste any time, and the very next day, she went to the address indicated on her late mother's note. The young woman found the right place pretty quickly. As it turned out, it was a closed neighborhood in the suburbs with big, beautiful mansions. Clutching her mother's note in her hand, Kate rang the doorbell. Of course, the young woman had no idea how to explain the purpose of her visit, so she decided to see how it would go and act accordingly. The door was opened by a pleasant woman in her 60s, whose face Kate found vaguely familiar. Where could I have seen her before? The young woman thought, wrinkling her forehead. Still pondering about it, Kate handed the woman her late mother's note. The woman adjusted her glasses on her nose and quickly ran her eyes over the note. 
Her face soon brightened and her eyes seemed to start glowing. Come inside, please. My husband will be very happy to meet you, the woman said with a mysterious smile. Still unable to understand what was happening, Kate obediently followed the woman. As it turned out a little later, a family of elderly millionaires lived in the huge mansion. Amanda and David Torres were landowners, and therefore their entire business was built on land and everything connected with it. Having seated Kate at the table, Mrs. Torres poured some tea for her, after which she gave her husband a meaningful look. Dear Lord, she looks so much like Penelope. David Torres couldn't help exclaiming. Sincere bewilderment froze in Kate's eyes. Penelope, did you know your mother? The young woman asked. Kate still couldn't understand what was going on and what the people sitting in front of her were thinking. Amanda and David looked at each other and then began their story. And they did have a story to tell. It all started with the fact that over 20 years ago, their only daughter, Penelope Torres, ran away from home, taking her part of the family jewels, which had been in the family for generations. The young woman wasn't a thief and only took such a drastic step because she'd fallen head over heels for some young construction worker. Of course, Penelope's parents didn't approve of their relationship and tried to nip it in the bud. At some point, their relationship got so passionate and intense that it launched a chain of events that no longer could be stopped. Feeling madly in love, the daughter of the wealthy landowners decided to run away from home and start a new life in a neighboring town together with her fiancé. Later, Penelope regretted her decision more than once, but it was too late to change anything. In fact, the love of her life turned out to be a lazy drunk who couldn't provide his beloved with anything but empty words of love. The situation was aggravated by the fact that Penelope was already pregnant by that time. The young woman couldn't admit to her mistake and go back home, so she decided to change her last name instead and raised her child alone. Penelope's life was full of hardships, but even when she lived below the poverty line, she didn't touch her family heirlooms. She later decided to put them in a safety deposit box to make sure that they were safe. Listening to Amanda and David Torres made Kate tear up. All this time, the young woman thought that her mother was an orphan, but now it turned out that Kate actually had grandparents and they were millionaires. Hugging her granddaughter, Mrs. Torres felt needed and loved once again. Having become a wealthy heiress, Kate returned the family heirlooms, which helped her find her grandparents. She didn't forget about the security guard Simon, who bravely prevented a terrible crime from happening and helped neutralize a dangerous gang. Rumor has it that after Simon got discharged from the hospital, the young people stayed in touch and then even started dating. It's hard to say what awaits Simon and Kate in the future, but one thing we can be sure of is that they will always respect and appreciate each other.